explored a number of different ways. One of which is um, when when everything that you're familiar with gets taken away from you, what's left, and uh, what what do you do with it? So uh, if all of your sense of self and sense of being is suddenly uh, removed from the equation, then where does it leave you? And I think both of us deal with that in different ways, uh, at least for the first few episodes of the show. It's very deep. Up next. Um, hi. One of the main things that uh, drew me into here in the first season was the fact that it was really one of the only true ensemble shows on TV. And I felt that all the characters got like an equal amount of attention and development. Um, unfortunately, I felt like some of the characters got sort of forgotten in season three, like Miranda. <laughs> and I was wondering if we're going to go back to something that resembles the style of the first season, where like all the characters get a fair amount of attention and it's more evenly played between the characters. Uh, well, actually, that is kind of an attempt for this season. We're going to be telling, actually, a little less number of stories per episode and um, focusing on just, like, three, three characters or three storylines. Um, and the idea is to try and tell deeper stories and not sort of wider stories, if you know what I'm saying. Um, just, just to dig a little deeper into, into, um, into each of our characters and, and what's moving them and what's making them, sort of motivating them to do what they're doing. So, um, but the idea with a show like this is it's always been kind of a juggling act because there, it is a large cast. And so um, this season we will see certain people um, that will sit out an episode or so because we want to focus on um, just a few characters each episode so that we don't have as quite as much bouncing around as we've done. Cool. Next question. Hi, my question is for Zach. I was wondering, congratulations on the new production company, and will that affect your time on the show? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm really lucky to be uh, in business with two very, very good friends of mine, Neil Dodson and Corey Musa, and uh, so we're able to really find a balance of uh, responsibility and availability and time of following you as you walk back to your seat. It's very good. I love you too. No, <laughs> oh, he does. So thank you. No, come on, I'll be, I'll be available. Cool. Next up. Uh, hi, Hayden. Uh, <laughs> four years to get here and I saw that you had an autograph thing and it, you know my stomach just I felt sick in my stomach a couple of weeks later when I saw in the magazine that you were there to uh, see people and shake hands and stuff and I was just wondering if there's any way I could see you up close. Perhaps after the panel. Yeah. No, I know I know these Oh yeah, no, I think yeah, I know these guys are rushing around Comic Con Say it again? Jordan. Jordan. Oh. When this is adjourned, you can meet me over there. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan just became the most envied man at the time. Don't get any ideas, Jordan. Too many big brothers up here. Just because the horn ring glasses aren't on does not mean HRT won't put you down. But, or, I'm sorry, next question? It's very hard to see, I apologize. Hi, um, I love the show, and one of the things I love most about it is the diversity in the cast. And as time has gone on, there have been fewer women, characters of color, younger characters, and I was just wondering if there was going to be any attempt to bring that back. We have a couple new ladies on the panel right now, actually, I think. I'm kind of tan. <laughs> In, in all seriousness, that's a very important issue for us on the show. We try to be as diverse as, as possible, and, and characters obviously come and go, but it's, um, it's a continuing, um, very important um, 
uh, thing that we try to, to, to fulfill for the audience. And so I would just say um, stay tuned and you'll see some, some really cool casting in, in that area.